Hello everybody, it's Michaela Peterson and we are talking about enzymes tonight, uh, which is a topic that used to scare the dickens out of me in organic chemistry, but I've learned a lot about it and it's a really important topic that I think we need to cover. So I've got some notes here and first of all, comment below where you're tuning in from and give me a little note in the comments on what you think enzymes are good for and we're gonna dive into it right now. So enzyme depletion can be as much of a precursor to, to disease as genetics or toxicity. So it is a huge topic that not many people know a lot about. So the, there's a direct reflection also or a direct connection between our immune system and the enzyme levels or our enzyme reserves. So they're really important for a lot of different things. So tonight we're gonna talk about four things. We're gonna first and foremost talk about what enzymes are, then we're gonna talk about what they do and how we get them along with some fun facts kind of mixed in. So first and foremost, what are enzymes? They are, they play a vital role first of all in our health and wellness. They are our rate limiting step in our body. If you remember organic chemistry at all, you remember the rate limiting step is the most important step in a reaction. And they speed up the rate at all of all chemical reactions in our body. Nothing in the body would happen if we didn't have enzymes. They are really the workhorse and the scavengers of our entire system. So um, we have an enzyme reserve. We're born with an enzyme reserve, much like women are born with the amount of eggs that they're going to have for the rest of their life. And every cell also produces enzymes. So pretty important in our, in our system overall. Okay, so the second thing is what they do or what they don't do, right? So if we are enzyme deficient, we age faster, we're constipated. How many of you know someone that's constipated? I mean, we are a constipated society, right? We get chronic disease. Most, if not all, cancer patients are enzyme deficient. And that is why this is such an important topic because we all know somebody or are somebody that is affected by cancer. And so enzymes really can help in a lot of different things, such as nutrient absorption. We know that, I, we talked about last time, that 80% of cancer patients are malnourished. So they need to absorb everything that they can that's going into their system. It aids in immune response, and we know how important that is. I mean, the cold and flu season is rampant, so we wanna do everything that we can to protect ourselves against getting sick and getting chronic disease in the first place. It aids in optimal digestion, which we're gonna dive into a little bit deeper in just a minute. It aid, enzymes aid in cognitive thinking. I don't know about you, but I want the brain fog to be gone, and I wanna be able to think as, as quickly and as clearly as possible as I need to. It aids in systemic detox, and um, also a little fun fact that sperm carry an enzyme to penetrate the outer lining of an egg. So literally, we would be nowhere without enzymes, right? None of us would even be in existence. So give me a little thumbs up here if you are shocked by all the things enzymes do in our body because I know when I dove into this topic, I couldn't believe how important those little guys are. So a little fun fact is that it's estimated that we have seven thousand reactions in our body and 3,000 specific enzymes. So if we're enzyme deficient, we are not firing on all cylinders for sure. Okay, so we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into digestion right now. We have several different specific enzymes that we talked about. One specific enzyme is called proteolytic enzymes. And most of us are deficient in these, but specifically cancer patients are deficient in proteolytic enzymes. Those are the enzymes that break down food. So you can imagine if you're deficient in those enzymes, you're either going to have to borrow from your reserves, your cells are gonna have to make more, and while your body could already have those enzymes and be getting those enzymes, your body is dedicating more energy to either finding or making the enzymes, which you know, in all of us is not a good situation, but specifically in cancer patients, they don't need to be utilizing that energy to find or to scavenge for enzymes. 
um, it, it would be best to get them in the natural form. So um, the cool thing about proteolytic enzymes, and I'm gonna geek out on you for just a second here, is if taken with food, they help with digestion which we already talked about, you know, cancer patients having being mal, you know, having malabsorption issues. And so that's really neat, right? So all of us need help in digestion. I mentioned constipation before, and you know, we all need help in the digest digestion category for gut health and things like that, which we'll talk about at a later date. But if they're taken on an empty stomach, if if they're taken with food, they become the digestive enzymes. If they're taken on an in Ugh, I can't talk. If they're taken on an empty stomach, though, they work outside the digestive system, which is great because systemic enzymes decrease the side effects of chemo and radiation. They protect healthy cells. They limit waste buildup from all the toxicities in our bodies. And um, anyway, they, they just help a lot. They decrease inflammation. They increase the power of natural killer cells. And remember a few weeks ago, we talked about natural killer cells being the Pac-Men of the immune system that roam around the system and eat cancerous cells or irregularly growing cells. Um, a fact that is not so fun is that enzyme deficiencies are more common than ever. And this is depicted by the cancer statistics, by autoimmune diseases being completely on the rise. I mean, kids are getting autoimmune diseases now. I mentioned constipation before, chronic disease is at an all-time high. And a lot of this is because we eat beige. We eat you know, beige, we only remember the platter that had two serving, two fist sizes of fruits and vegetables. That's what most Americans eat on a daily basis, which is a perfect segue into how we get these enzymes. So give me some guesses on as to where you think we get these enzymes. Okay. If you guessed raw produce, then you get an A for this little Enzyme 101 class. You are exactly right. So we talked about a normal person, a normal functioning adult, needs 7 to 13 fist sizes of fruits and vegetables every single day. Now, if you have a chronic disease, or if you have cancer, or if you're pregnant, or breastfeeding, or an athlete, you actually need 18 fist sizes of produce. So the food we eat, if the food we eat is cooked, baked, steamed, microwaved, boiled, roasted, toasted, fried, a partridge in a pear tree, however we cook it, right? If it's cooked at le greater than 129 degrees, then the food is already enzyme depleted. Or our, and that means our system has to produce those enzymes or borrow from the reserves in order to even process it, right? So we want that vine ripened produce. So I'm sure you're thinking, right, where do we get the vine ripened produce and what are the best sources? So the best sources are actually the sources that aren't readily available in Nebraska a lot of times. So papaya, how many of you like papaya? Oh, I do not like papaya, so I prefer to get it in the whole food nutritional concentrate form, which I don't even know that it's in there. It is in there though, right? The research shows that. So papaya, pineapple, raspberries, pomegranate, blackberries, colored greens, kale, carrot, carrots, and garlic are the best sources of enzymes. We actually should be consuming 75% of our total daily diet in the form of raw or uncooked living food. How many of you do that? Give me a thumbs up or a heart if you do that because that is nearly impossible to do on your own without supplementation of some sort, right? And you all know what my, what my preferred method of that is. Okay, so a fun fact about pineapple in specific is that pineapple contains an enzyme called bromelain. And bromelain actually has the cap contains the same digestive capabilities as two major enzymes that we need for digestion. Those proteolytic enzymes that I talked about 
you know, that we're all deficient in pretty much, but cancer patients in specific are, are deficient in this. And those two enzymes that it has the capabilities of are pepsin and trypsin. So this though, pineapple, bromelain that's in pineapple, is not only active in the stomach, but also in the small intestine. So it's like a double whammy. It's like a big bang for your buck in pineapple. So that helps to immensely in, you know, it's essential in my opinion for people with cancer to consume pineapple. But also a fun fact during this time of year is that pineapple contains 500% more bromelain than any cough syrup known to man. So it actually is a better cough suppressant, in my opinion, we did this study in our house last winter, than any cough syrup that you can get. Pineapple is a great anti-inflammatory and also great for cough. So here's, here's the bottom line of this whole thing. I drove, this is a personal story that's gonna make me look pretty bad, but I, it's a good story. I drove a 1978 LTD for six years. And I'm a prime example that you can drive a car on little or no oil for a while before it breaks down. And what raw food does for our system is like what oil does for a car, right? We talked about the enzymes. There are so many different phytochemicals that we've talked about before. And so the, the bottom line is you can drive a car on little or no oil for a while, but eventually we're done. You know, our system gives up, we get disease, we get cancer, we get constipation, and all of those are signals to us that we need to change something, and, and we can change something. So give me a little thumbs up if you learned something tonight. And if you have anyone in your world that is struggling through cancer, we want to help them stride through cancer, or if they have chronic disease, or whatever it is, there is hope in what we consume. We can change our outcomes, and if not anything else, we can, we can improve our quality of life. And so anyway, I can't wait to talk to you next week. We'll have another fun topic, and feel free to share this video with whomever you think it will bless.